mor- afternoon. If you've been following the messages from the chaplains of the open table during this time of social distancing, I'm sure you've noticed that we celebrate Holy Communion after every message. The chaplains of the open table community are from churches that serve communion every Sunday to everyone. My particular tradition encourages us to take Holy Communion as often as we gather in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm guessing that when you see the communion part of the service, that you have a hard time noticing the communion table that's being used. But if you were able to get up close and see it in person, you would see that just below the surface on the edge, the front edge of the table, words that are commonly commonly seen on communion tables in many churches across the world. And the words that you would see are in remembrance of me, in remembrance of me. These words might suggest that Holy Communion is something we do to keep alive the fame of our dead hero, Jesus Christ. After all, the word remembrance connects us with a sense that something is absent and only to be recalled in our minds. But that is not what was meant in the early Christian community by remembering. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26, we hear these words. Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I have handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We read in these scriptures that to remember is to bring the past vitally into the present, to actualize it here and now. The original Greek word for remember really means recalling. Do this for my recalling. To recall Christ means to appropriate him as a present reality. So according to this scripture then, for us to remember is to not think about a past event, but to make that event present again so that it shapes us and molds us and inspires us and becomes fuel for our spirit. It is the bringing of the past into the present. You probably have heard the old spiritual, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Well, this spiritual helps us to understand this reality. When it speaks of the cross, the cross steps off the pages of history and we are there reenacting the crisis of our redemption. We are there with the disciples in the upper room. We are there at the foot of Jesus' cross with Mary, the mother of Jesus. We are there with the women who first heard the good news that Jesus is not here. He is risen. We are not gathered in this moment virtually or digitally, remembering someone who is dead and gone, who who lived and died and left a memory or a nice legacy. We are not remembering someone whose place is in the past where we can only watch their story unfold on the History Channel. We remember someone who was crucified, dead, and buried, and rose again. And so we remember Jesus Christ in Holy Communion in order to encounter Jesus Christ. Remembrance becomes encounter. A preacher once told a congregation, it is long since my mother and father died, and there are times when I forget them, and even when I do think of them, the days seem so far away when they were last here. But if I go and stand beside a certain grave in a little cemetery in this small little town, I feel that if I stretch out my hand, I can touch them. You see, Holy Communion is that place where we are aware of, of the presence of the Lord, and we are able to touch and sense his presence where remembrance ends with encounter. A little girl had this habit of hearing a bedtime story, and one night she said to her mother, tell me a story about Jesus and put me in it. 
You see, Holy Communion is a retelling of Jesus' story, and we are all in it. In the liturgy, we hear Jesus' words, This is my body given for you. That you is you. Holy Communion confronts us with God's love for us all. We are confronted with God's love in this story, even if we feel unworthy of God's love. One time, a preacher offered Holy Communion to a tearful woman approaching the table. She hesitated from taking the bread and cup, and the preacher spoke up, Take it, friend. It's for you. It's for sinners. In the bread and cup, we receive God's love for us all. And this love is unlike anything else in the world. If we try to describe it or try to explain it, we'll have the same kind of trouble that this little child had in writing a paragraph describing human anatomy. The child wrote, Your head is kind of round and hard, with your brains in it and your hair on it. Your face is in front of your head where you eat. Your neck is what keeps your head off your shoulders, which are like hooks for your backpack. Your arms help you to throw. Your fingers help you to scratch and count. Your legs help you to run, and your toes often get stubbed. That is all there is to you except what is inside and I ain't seen that yet well friends our situation is a little different the child has seen the outside but not the inside but we have seen the inside but not the outside we have not seen God but we've seen God's loving heart as the scriptures state God proves his love for us in that while we were sinners Christ died for us Though we've not seen God, we've seen God's love, and so we come to Holy Communion, to that place where believing uh, God loves us and God will accept us as we are. There was a cartoon that had one frame where a man was passing by a sign that read, uh, prepare to meet God. The second frame shows a man, that same man, stopping in front of a mirror, taking off his hat, and smoothing out his hair. Well, we need not prepare our hair for Holy Communion. We only need to prepare our hearts. God is most concerned about our hearts, our attitude, and our inner intention. There was a woman who was known in her community as a sinner due to her life choices. This woman became desperately ill. A man named Falconer was called to comfort her aching soul. Falconer sat down by this woman's side and read a story from the Bible about a dinner at the home of Simon of Capernaum, where a woman who was a sinner insisted on washing the feet of Jesus. And when he had finished reading the story, the silence that followed was broken by a sobbing sound from a dark corner of the room. The sick woman said, please place a bookmark there, sir. Maria will read it to me when you're gone. Again, from the corner of the room, there came this sobbing sound. It was a young, frail-looking girl. Falconer's concerning eyes looked towards her. Will he come again, she asked. Who? Will he come again? Jesus Christ, I've heard that he will come again someday. Why do you ask? Falconer replied. Because, when she said these words, a burst of tears came upon her, and her words were unintelligible. But as she recovered herself in a few minutes, she finished the sentence where she had left off, and she put her hand up to her poor, thin, colorless hair and said, Because my hair ain't long enough to wipe his feet. Sisters and brothers, I invite you now to prepare for Holy Communion, to go and to round up a piece of bread and a cup with juice or wine, that in this moment, with that same attitude, you will meet the crucified and risen Christ face to face. The past becomes present where you encounter the living Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, As we prepare to transition to Holy Communion, may we realize the dynamic moment that is present here, that we are a part of that story, 
and that we can re-experience it again in our lives, right where we are, in our home, with ourselves, with our loved ones gathered around us, we can experience again this reality that we were there. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good afternoon. I'm Chaplain Masulam. I'm the uh, chaplain from uh, Open Table Service doing the second portion of our service today, uh, which is the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Um, earlier, Chaplain Osborne did the, sec the, the first portion, which was the uh, uh, preaching of the word. Now, I'd like to ask those of you who are at home watching us today, um, if you can please grab uh, a bread, a piece of bread, and pour a bit of wine on a cup, and I will include to bless those as I celebrate the Holy Eucharist. Uh, if you don't have access to that, that's fine. Just follow through with me. Uh, for those who have access, I give you some time to do that, starting now. All right. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For the post-communion prayer, please join me. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. If you are able, please rise for the benediction. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. For the dismissal, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your time. Have a safe and blessed week.